it's my great, actually, privilege uh, to be speaking to Sudhir Padrakar about his work. Because his work has, I think, been very uh, influential in the way that I think even my approach to my own kind of practice has evolved. But when Madhu kind of approached me to kind of begin this conversation uh, with uh, Sudhir sir, I was terrified of the very idea because I was, you know, like, okay, how do I talk about work? Because it's, you know, a very kind of scary to talk about somebody's work who you admire so much. So uh, we did, and, but, you know, we went, Madhu and we went to Thane to uh, Sudhir sir's house. And, okay, Sudhir sir's house. Okay, and, and, and then we kind of started talking about that we had a conversation about what about his work I really enjoyed. And uh, we came up with this plan. Uh, the plan was like this, is that there were images of architecture, there was a certain kind of anxiety I had about the way the body is represented or is captured by architecture. And this image is kind of, I guess, uh, symptomatic of that. It's like a figure graph, a figure as the emptiness, and, and or rather figure as the black space and ground as the white space. So, Huh? I'll be naked. So, so what happens is that, uh, no, because I want to explain the process. <laughs> the uh, so, I mean, and I spoke to him about you know the problems with it, and and then we came up with a plan. Over the next, over the past week, we've been exchanging emails, uh, and the emails essentially look like this. Okay, it's a PowerPoint presentation that that I put some six slides in. Okay, and I sent it to him, and then. He kind of, you know, sent back a few slides. Then he reorganized it, and we kept kind of putting notes below for each other to kind of look at. So in the comment section below. So what you'll be seeing today is actually a replayed conversation uh, in some kind of way uh, between images of architecture and images of art. So that's it. So just to kind of give you some kind of background in terms of what the uh, what the way that this I guess conversation has evolved. Uh, so anyway, this first is, uh, I'll just open the slide now. So this is, I mean, tentatively, as I said, figure ground, uh, mapping the body industry, because this is, uh, this is where the, where, where I thought that, the, that, that, that a lot of the work um, does so much more than architecture can manage to, and it's kind of like, in the languages that it has a representation. Because this is generally the way that architecture tends to deal with, uh, the body uh, is that there's a generic kind of AutoCAD figure which can be downloaded from the internet and dumped across different drawings, you know. And the, the body has no class, has no, I mean, there's nothing, it belongs to some kind of, I guess, old climate mid area, and we are kind of dumping on across the planet to get the same kind of body. And uh, <laughs> I've been to many kind of colleges of architecture, we we'll see the same kind of drawing across, you see. And uh, that leads to kind of ideas like this. Now, this is you know, I'm calling it a disappearing body, but uh, if you're looking at like, if you look at the image at the lower part of the image, on the left side, you see a woman wearing a hat uh, and heels, and this is supposed to be in actually fine, right? And, and, and over there, we have like a class, is very clearly marked off because there's a little gardener sitting there, tending the garden there, and he's darker, and he's sitting down, and he's bored, and he's like, you know, making sure that if you buy a flat here, okay, your gardens will be there, you know, so there's that kind of language in the image. So this is the kind of problem that I thought, you know, we could kind of begin to talk about. Can you go back? Yeah. This part. Yeah. yeah, so uh, as Ron was saying that we were thinking we were looking at and this is a simple uh, kind of oversimplified thing that architecture represents the body in a certain way. And what are the ways in which uh, painting or my work uh, has represented the body and in relation to the city space basically we are talking about the architecture of the city and the space of the city so I have uh, four images of uh, different kinds of spaces public spaces we started with this line where the figure ground contrast goes between built up and open space so an open space was defined as the public space. So, within the public space here, uh, the workspace, the first slide, the workspace this is the painting from 77, uh, between the go down and the truck and the tea shop or, or the leisure space. 
So between these two spaces of the workspace and the leisure space, this body of the worker finds its, finds its place and it has to negotiate between these uh, kind of uh, planes pressing it in that small space. This opens out the background in another way. This is Kurla Bridge. So we have a group now. We have a group of figures on the bridge, and uh, we have the city opening it out, opening opening out behind this group of figures. So this is another kind of experience of a city, open space, public space, uh, where there's a mosque, there's a now defunct uh, textile mill. And uh, all the huts rising up onto that hill. So, this is another kind of uh, railway. The, the railway bridge is a very important kind of public space that we all experience uh, the city through. You just saw in Sri Lanka film uh, in this image uh, the Lorpa Rail Bridge, the Owen Stone Bridge. Uh, coming from the colonial period, uh, standing witness as if uh, to historical change. Uh, the mills came, the mills have gone, and now the high rises have come. And the lower part, we, we see uh, the second generation or, or, or the sons and daughters of mill workers now having to deal with making a living out of different ways of. Uh, Kind of small uh, entrepreneurs and whatever. So this this kind of public space of the city, which has changed character today, or in any other place, has changed character. So this historical change in the public space is another aspect of what one represents or tries to represent. And the last image is uh, the last image of this set is a composite image. This is actually. Uh, not of one particular place as Lower Parade was. This is an image which brings together Kap Parade uh, up and Panduk and, and everything in between almost. Mm -hmm. So it's like that the black copper there somewhere, there is the Mickey River, there is Kap Parade and there's everything else. So this is an experience of this of living in the city, of traveling up and down and of incorporating all these different images of the city and the human figure, the representation of the human figure in this, uh, to give it to the, the in, in a sense the, the the people who live, love, there's a, there's a couple in the corner there, and work and uh, relax, everything, you know, so the whole life laid out. So it's a kind of panorama of city life. As such, so this is another kind of public space. This is an imagined, imagined space. So these are different ways, four different ways in which, uh, very contrary to the kind of very simplified. Of course, we will see that many architects have in fact tried to uh, propose more complex ways of representing the body. As the one will point out, we started out with with a very commercial kind of uh, representation of architecture as against that these four different ways in which uh, the human body finds place in the city architecture of spaces. Yeah, so I think to me the kind of collapse of time space kind of really, you know, uh, at least it kind of begins to open out new ways of reading the city, which uh, very often architects tend to kind of keep very clear, you know, they're talking about space and represent only that you can't map time in, a, in, in, in something and also particularity. In a sense, yes. uh, we have another kind of idea of the architect, and this is idea of the perfect body. And uh, because the bodies that are supposed to inhabit architectural representations very often are apparitions, uh, they exist as uh, if, and we we'll see actually, uh, uh, you know, this could be one. Uh, this is Vitruvius' uh, ideal map, and you know, the body is used as uh, as a diagram of the geometry, you know, so the abstraction from the from the real everyday body with its kind of idiosyncrasies. Is completely kind of erased and you know marginalized. Um, and there's another which is this, which is the Vatu Purushmandal, where the body is used as a map of the cosmos. 
um, completely kind of abstracted off into you know your navel is the kind of axis mundi, right? So the so the uh, separation from the everyday or rather the material is completely um, very very far fetched or wrong. And then there is the anthropometric, which is the, this is the Corbusier's modular man, uh, similar to the Vitruvian man. It's the ideal proportions, uh, these proportions were used to design cities. And the model of the same. And this, you know, is you know, this is an image by a name of student of mine, just recently, uh, where he, to make the design of his building, he laid down upon a tracing paper, and a friend of his placed his body up, and the body, his body, the shape of his body became his building. Talk about ego. Uh, so, you can imagine what that is. Mm. And uh, you know, these are images that uh, so they said. Which are like, you know, playing with this idea of the perfect body. Yeah, I, I think this idea of the perfect body or the ideal body is extremely important in the sense it has played a very important role in our in architecture and in our thinking general. And uh, the Victorian man or uh, Corbusier's modular man or the Indian version of that. Uh, the idea of the human being being the human being the center of the universe, the center of the cosmos. And the measurements of the human in some sense having direct relationship with the measurements of the cosmos. Now this idea is very attractive and it's, it's something that has fed our philosophy and our thinking in various ways. So in art, the question of the body uh, comes up in various ways and, and one, one can say one uh, extreme of it is this idea of the ideal or the perfect or the cosmic. So, Nataraj, one knows, is in that sense, the, the, the source, the dance is the source of the cosmos in a sense. So, from there to, uh, yeah, to uh, another uh, uh, miniature painting where nature, I mean, the body and nature, the relationship between nature, now it's so particularized, but it doesn't lose its contact with the ideal in a sense. It still retains its contact with the ideal, but it connects with the sensuousness of nature. So the sensuous body and sensuous nature, nature as experience. So that is another example of the way in which a body is conceived. Uh, coming down uh, rather <laughs> the ground almost is is the modern version. It's, this is a, it's again a 77 painting of mine for construction uh, worker. Uh, a squat muscular body which again is does refer to a certain kind of ideal of uh, new man, maybe Soviet man, even uh, many many there were many versions of uh, the idea of the, the worker, the male worker as the ideal. So this refers in that sense, but it also refers to the city in that sense and the pillar of strength on one hand, but also representing construction and also a certain kind of pathos in that uh, relationship. So, I was, and, yeah. I was completely intervening just because, you know, of the fact that in one of the earlier presentations, this image came directly after this image. So that was kind of an interesting also, like the same posture almost exactly. Yeah, and the next image is Bhupin Hathkar Sakiba. Now this body, for example, uh, the, the whole Krishna cult uh, of men dressing up as women who worship Krishna, to identify with the love for Krishna. Uh, what kind of body is this? And, and what kind of space? I mean, if we imagine the space for the Nataraj, Nataraj's dance creating its own cosmic space to the idea of the miniature where the oneness with nature and the feminine sensuous body and then the worker, the body of the worker in, in conflict with the surroundings to some extent but still represented as a pillar of those of the, the, like structuring that those surroundings to a figure like this. Now, the point here is just that uh, the ideal body as I mean architecture using an ideal body and ideal body measurements to lay out plans. Now how would we go about laying out plans in reference to these four 
different, very different kinds of water. That's why the talent should not be yeah, right. <laughs> Like that, simply to ask the subject. I think is the that I think is the real kind of reason why this quality for me is very very interesting. Uh, uh, this is another kind of section. What happened actually is that they all went together and then the images started separating into kind of categories. So this category emerged um, as something. And this is one of my favorite images that uh, that's Le Corbusier's hand over Paris. And in a quick gesture, he transforms the medieval city of Paris to crystalline tiles. And somehow that hand and the eye standing up there looking down upon the model gives a sense of power, separation that automatically gives a certain kind of power uh, power to represent and understand and sculpt entire lives uh, and this is another uh, uh, this is Pete Eisenman's exile Pete Eisenman is an architect who uh, does in a sense he is against the romantic humanism of the enlightenment uh, so he starts kind of completely doesn't deal with the body at all. It's a very conscious choice to deal only with form itself. So the body is actually not represented at all, very self-consciously. It's almost a violent anti-humanism, completely. Um, and you know, and it kind of stems from some kind of early modernism. This is Lisa and the Rohe's house, uh, maybe in Chicago, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it's called the Farnsworth House. And this was built for a single woman. Uh, and uh, it's completely dazed, as you can see. Uh, and uh, yeah, she, uh, she got into serious fights with her, with him because you know she didn't have a place to change. <laughs> so if you can imagine, uh, and of course this is the masterpiece. Architects, uh, you know, salivate over this building. Uh, so you can, yeah, and it is beautiful. <laughs> and this is another idealized body. This is actually I find this an interesting. This is Charles Courier's artist's village. And the only images he uses to, and this is in Bela Bo, it's like in, less than an hour away. Uh, the only images that he uses to talk about the people who are going to be using in these spaces are these, right? And uh, this is supposed to be a new city. So, but there's some kind of way maybe Indian, okay, is kind of moved into the body of the woman who's carrying the mudka on top of her and getting water right in the middle of the city. So, I've, I've tried to kind of figure out, you know, what is this Indian and how does the body begin to kind of represent that entire. Indian, you know, talking about the uh, even the Radha figure, uh, or even the kind of so that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is interesting, as you said, and uh, I think Kohler's work in fact has reflected that that concern for bringing in local uh, the local people and in some senses, uh, but it's very conflict uh, driven and, and and there's lots of problems with the whole. It just goes to show. How difficult it is, in fact, as you as Rohan said, to address this very question. Yeah, I, I'll show you some slides of my work now, which uh, which address the question of of different kinds of spaces uh, of the city. And, and uh, as Rohan started by saying, talking about abstraction and the, and the desire for abstraction. Uh, and this this painting is called the abstractionist. And it reflects and it shows an artist looking at the, the work that he, an abstract work that he has done. And the reference is obviously to, to the buildings outside, to the geometrical, to the simplified geometrical modernist architecture in a sense. I mean, it's very suburban, ordinary architecture, but it comes from that kind of uh, sensibility or that kind of vision. And it's in a sense the way in which it is reflected in that cupboard uh, gives you a hint of where it is coming from. So there is this desire for abstraction and for purity, which is a very legitimate desire. Uh, the thing that there is a problem with it, it's, it's not a problem with the desire, but what complicates it, in a sense, is the sweating body or, or the mess of the chapter when you get up in the morning. And, and what do you do with that? I mean, you know, you can't iron out all irregularities in your own life. And, and in the way in which your body functions. So that that tension, but that is what keeps abstraction uh, alive in a way, that, that tension between these two things. The next is a very different kind of image where the city is seen not as purity, not as abstraction, but cities as a maze, which in a sense uh, kind of enmeshes all the conflicts and the uh, 
the tensions between people. So it's a maze through which people have to. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's kind of it's, the city becomes a representation in a sense of the mindsets and the problems that beset the people in it. This is a painting called Shark. Another way to look at buildings is as a, as a uh, collection of narratives. Uh, there are various things happening here and, and one has experienced that in one's own society or if one has lived in a chawl or if one, wherever one lives and each, each house is a narrative, each room is a narrative, each, each person carries that narrative. So, so one, a, a painter's relationship to architecture can be of this nature where there are different narratives, there is a, you can see all the things, different things happening, the music class there, there's this probably a sick person. Having undergone a, a, a brain surgery or something, and then there are these workers that going back in the bus after the night shift, a couple the inside the house, and and of course the the Joliwala poet, painter, activist who tries to make sense of all these narratives and and has has unfortunately failed to hold them all in one big mega narrative, mega narrative. But he still tries, I think, and, and that's worth it, I suppose. Yeah, next, please. The chawl, which used to be all the time kind of protected as the community, the city community, and which one has seen disintegrate in front of one's eyes. So that's another kind of story going on in the city. Now it's probably over, almost over. Next, please. Then there is the private space. Uh, within the public space and this image where you sit down and close your eyes and have a sip of tea and you recreate in your own mind the space, the private space and the city allows this and it happens all the time to us so so that that kind of space in the city, that experience of I think you, Patel's paintings of the railway platform are extremely wonderful examples of this kind of space that uh, which no one sees until one needs it. It's there only when you need it, and one needs to seek it out in that kind of sense. And this is uh, well, it's, it's it's the kind of imagined spaces uh, in the city. Uh, there's the social space that on on the left on on your left. Uh, of the mill, there's a political space in the center where there's a street play in, so there's a political space and there's a private, again, a private or uh, 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 a psychological space, right, uh, where this person is reflecting upon the meaning of the connection between the political space and the social <coughs> space in a sense. So, so the city also all these spaces are in a sense real spaces, but they become, they, they, they are imagined as these different spaces. So they have the potential to give you uh, this experience of different kinds of spaces. Yeah, Next. yeah. So for me also this, this kind of, you know, the title of kind of telling you that like a story, like, like yeah, there's, there's something kind of cinematic about the way that the frame keeps kind of kind of moving. Yeah. And, and actually this is something that so actually, that was an image that kind of got sorry, I'm talking to last. Last, that that you know, like how do you map a moving body? And uh, because it's architecture trying to deal with all kinds of bodies, uh, which you don't know how to kind of handle. But uh, this is a way in which one kind of Japanese architect is trying to do, which is that they're mapping space and time as icons. Each of those images are icons, and the yellow lines represent one part of movement. It's like the entire world is a machine, and everything moves like it's like some kind of uh, this one. It's trying to kind of map at least movement through time in some kind of way. Uh, and this is another, this is from the JIIA, uh, Journal of Indian History of Architects, uh, from the 1950s or the 60s, where they're trying to find out this is the kitchen band. So it's about how a woman uses the kitchen and the sizes of an Indian woman Indian and how kitchens need to be designed for that. So it's all about measuring kitchen. Another, another representation of a woman lab. Uh, and this is another architect called uh, Manaj 
assuming who is trying to at least the, the idea is to kind of understand the body and its basic tension with architecture because the body has this fluidity and has kind of the movement and architecture tends to kind of let's say organize that. So what he's trying to do is trying to try to capture the violence uh, essentially uh, that happens when the body uh, kind of uh, comes in contact with architecture. And this is sorry, no? and this is a poster that he made. To really appreciate architecture, you may even need to commit the murder. So the idea is that you know this the, the architecture becomes like a precipice, like something that's violent against like the softness of the body. Architecture essentially being hard, and uh, to appreciate it, you need to be able to stretch the boundary every time. Uh, uh, and this is one of the image that was you know that man standing right on top there looking down from the Bauhaus building. So this is the high modernism uh, celebrating architecture as a place that can take you to the height to these precipices. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting and. You know, I'll move this guy up because I can't just stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so moving on to shoot a painting. I mean, uh, painting is an art of uh, a static image, it's not an art of the moving image. Uh, so, uh, but if it does have a narrative, then it, it has a narrative by suggesting uh, a past and a future moment to the given representative moment. So in that sense, uh, this moment becomes a symbolic moment, the fall, it's called the fall. And, and uh, in my mind, it, it represented the kind of uh, fall from on the work. The worker was on a pedestal for a long period in this century, in a sense that he was expected to deliver uh, humanity from something. And then all that kind of evaporates in, in a phase and, and there's a fall and there's still, there's still hope and so that, that kind of movement which is an implied movement uh, in the world yeah thanks but one needs to I mean painting does try to capture the, the moving body in different ways and this is one way in which uh, I tried it a, a body within a small space and a body moving within a small space how what kind of relationship does it Kind of uh, establish with its its uh, immediate surroundings, I guess, and a very different kind of uh, relationship with uh, the way in which the cities and, and proportions in the city are, are becoming, and the, the fear of the body being swallowed up. Uh, so the space of the city becomes a space for the body to move through, but not make a difference. I mean, the the movement of the body doesn't seem to make any difference to the space. So then what, what is this relation? Is there a relationship there? Uh, this is an image that's on the highway. It's very kind of, it, it kind of brought that, that painting kind of brought this to me. That this, there's a grandfather and a grandchild looking at the JCB kind of like winding the road. And the scale shifts are, uh, are tremendous. You know, in one, in one space, like a um, kid is playing and this huge highway is kind of cutting across like that. There's this guy, there's this, these new infrastructures are kind of, in a sense, you know, whether they're new malls or glass facades or these enormous things, are tending to erase the body. There's a, there's a, like, you know, you can't walk on it because the things, the flaws are so deep. You know, constantly kept moving. The confidence to stay in this difficult. And, uh, and anyway, so that, that, that was, that, that, that's one of those things that I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, uh, as a painter, uh, as, as any, any person who experiences the city, or experiences space, this the sense of locomotor space, and uh, and showing showing you two paintings just to indicate some sense of, uh, I mean, one when when one looks and makes a visual representation of a certain thing, it's not just a visual experience. It's it's the experience of climbing up that bridge and then going down that bridge and then going through that small tunnel below that railway bridge and then having the option to either turn down on the on the left or turn. Up on the right, so all all these elements of motion, of locomotion, of you moving through space, are incorporated within the visual. And the next one is again of the same space, but at a different moment. I think, uh, and people ultimately move. The movement of people is ultimately making the city. I mean, uh, as as he said about malls, where it's 
tendency to erase the body, but it's the city is made by people moving. It's not made by people sitting in their homes alone. It's made by people moving. So the representation of that becomes extremely kind of important. Yeah. Again, just another image of moving people. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and creating and movement creates space and and the idea that this person uh, probably has very little space, but uh, that stroke of his is going to create that space for a sixer. So, will that? Uh, the question is, will the city allow this creation of space, this this mental, <laughs> psychological, and imaginative creation of space? This is Rohan's image. I'm just kind of adding my own notes to it. <laughs> this actually photograph is taken on Link Road. That road is under construction. And in that time when the road is under construction, you can't cricket here. So it's like the making of a playground by the performance of bodies. And uh, and, and, and it's like these these are the bodies that are actually have to be kind of marginalized by these infrastructures. And they are, in the sense, using their bodies as as kind of claims, claims to space. And I think, you know, in uh, Sudhir's work, that kind of claim to space and the kind of body and the way that kind of claim to space is made is kind of top notch. It's often it's given kind of tangibility, um, and uh, and that's why you know I think this is enough. Right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so that is what we kind of ended up talking about actually. Should we take a few questions? Yeah. Uh,